Hey, you know, today we're going to go through exercise 4C, which is on lines with one intercept on page 229 of your textbook. So last lesson we talked about what happens if we have two intercepts. So for example, an x-intercept and a y-intercept, how we can just uh, we'll connect the dots together and end up with our linear relation. But sometimes we'll actually end up with a line that only has one intercept, whether that's a single x-intercept and a no y-intercept, or y-intercept and no x-intercept, or the x and y intercept being the same value, sometimes you end up with only one intercept. So our three key ideas for today are vertical lines, horizontal lines, and lines that pass through the origin, or in other words, the zero, zero coordinate. Just a reminder that this is our x-intercept, uh, sorry, our x-axis that goes across, and then our y-axis that goes from top to bottom. So if you look at the red line over here, if we were to continue this line here, we would notice that it goes on forever without touching the y axis and the reason being is that it's because it's parallel to the y axis and it's in the form of x equals to b and the reason i call it b is because i don't actually know what the value is in this situation i know that x equals to three because no matter what value i put in for y so no matter how high or low it is the value of x is always going to be three if i had for example a line that was over here same idea, y could be whatever value, but x is always going to be one. So the idea is that x is equal to a certain number, and we call that a constant. Constant because it's just a number. So there's no letters, it's just x equals two, three, or four, whatever it is. Similar idea applies for our blue line, which is our, uh, which is parallel to our uh, x-axis. It's horizontal, and it has the equation of y equals to c. Once again, c is another number. So in this case, we know that c is going to be 2 because for whatever value of x, my y value is always going to be negative 2. Sorry, not positive 2, negative 2. Because if it was positive 2, the line would be up here. Okay, with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the formulas. So we talked about how the vertical line is x equals to whatever, and our Horizontal line is y equals to whatever. Now, we, once again, we're just using b and c as placeholders, but it's important to understand that b, we're going to call our x-intercept, and y, we're going to call as our, uh, uh, c, sorry, c, we're going to call our y-intercept. So let's go ahead and put that into practice. So let's sketch the following horizontal and vertical lines. So with y equals a 3, remember, if I was to look back over here, you can remember that it's y equals to something, so it's going to be a horizontal line. So I'm going to say when y equals a 3, it's going to be up here, 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 wherever it is, it doesn't matter because they're all on the same line. So my horizontal line is going to look like this. That is y equals to 3. If I do the similar idea for this one, x equals to negative 4, if I look back over here, I know that x equals to something is going to be my vertical line. So I know that x equals to negative 4, negative 4 is over here, so my line looks like that. So for whatever value of y, my x is always going to be negative 2. So that's the idea with horizontal and vertical lines. Where it gets a little bit more difficult is when I have lines that pass through the origin. So over here, I've got a bunch of lines, so it's important to know that every single one of these lines, the purple, red, green, blue, they all pass through the point 0, 0, which is once again our origin. Our y-intercept is 0, and our x-intercept is 0. So what we can do is that we need to understand that it's in the form of y equals to mx. And this is a part of the gradient intercept form. We will learn about that next lesson, but it's part of our gradient intercept form, which lets us well, find information based off the actual equation. So it's in a gradient intercept form, and we're looking at graphs that all uh, converge at 0, 0. What we can do is we can substitute any value of x so that we can get a second point and then draw the graph. So over here, I've got sketch the graph of y equals 3x. Now, based on this, you can see that, once again, m is going to be some number, okay? It's going to be the sum number. So we see y equals 3x, y equals mx, and in the same form. So I know it's going to go past through 0, 0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find a second point. So I'm going to substitute x equals to 1. So what happens if we let x equals to 1? Well, I'm going to rewrite y equals to 3 times x. Now, obviously, instead of writing x, I'm writing 1. So I'm going to get rid of the x 
and I get 3 times 1, which is 3. So I have x is 1, which I said earlier. x is 1, and I have y is 3. So I'm going to go 1, and then 3, which goes up to here. I connect the dots. I'm going to try my best to draw a straight line. There we go. And that is my equation of y equals to 3x. So that's how we go ahead and try to graph lines with one intercept. Let me know if you have any questions, but remember to focus on your three key ideas.